All right, so we were able to get this uh, side of the porch sheath before we went to lunch, and then we went ahead and made up. We've got these panels here, and they're all uh, hammed on the end, notched, and ready to go up on this section of roof. The biggest problem that we're going to have is that this porch is here, so we can't drive the mega deck along the roof line. I wish I had my boom lift so I could just take the boom right up there, but I don't have it. I'm going to lay a board on the sheathing, hopefully so that this can't slide down, and I'm just going to work on top of this plank, hopefully. I don't want to bring a ladder on top of the roof. That's not very safe either, but i got to do something because i got to get up there and install those roof sheets down at the eave line, so let's figure something out. Now the thing is, whenever you're doing these trim details, don't just cut things uh, straight. Always leave yourself a little one inch tab on the end of your trims and you do that so that you can make the miters or the laps perfect, as perfect as possible, and then come back with a rivet and rivet them tight. If you get rid of all your steel, you lose the ability to do that. So just a little tip, something that you learn over time that Crap, took that spot off. Better redo it. You? No, that was like a like back in the day, you know, You're when I first person. First person, yeah. Or a third person. Kind of. Wait, no, no, it'll be first person. Yeah. See? So right here, I've got this little tab, and that's what's gonna hook around the outside fascia. You're tight. If you want to come my way or here, it, yeah. Yep. So you can right. do that. All right, guys. So this detail right here, this is how our E flashing comes together in a valley pan on an inside corner everything is lapped but that's not all that's going to get done you're probably looking at this seeing the ice and water underneath and wondering why because it really doesn't matter we're going to have another valley pan that's going to be hemmed on these edges not allowing water to go anywhere like it, it's just not going to be able to even work up in a nice dam um, so i'm not concerned with it we, we laid this in just because it's good practice um, not because we need it for water protection. There should not be water in our valley. So stick with me and we'll, we'll finish these details. But for now, what we wanted was a, a clean defining line right here in our valley. So me and Greg can run a square line up the roof and get this side laid out perfectly so that way up there at the top of our valley where the two valleys meet and our ridge cap for this porch meets, we want to know exactly where that is so that we can hit the exact point on our steel layout when we get to it. So what we're doing right now is we're finding a square line right at this valley so that we can make sure that everything is marked off of that line going into the valley. You got to make sure that when you go into a valley or a hip, you don't have to, but it makes things easier if your sheets are running square because your, your dimensions will stay consistent and you won't have a jag in your panel. You can get a nice tight clean line. 23. 10 and 7 16. Actually, 23, 10 and a half would be exact. I'm 7 16. Got it. Oh man. Oh boy. Ah! I had to try, dude. I, ha I wanted to be able to do it myself. Don't touch it. Go. No. You got time for this. I'm 10 and 9 16. Dude, we're an eighth inch off. Eighth inch different. 16th yeah. off of what we should be. 16th off? That ain't bad. So I'd say all. what we're going to do, remember, we want to hit that point up there. Yeah. So now that's what we got to figure out. Now we got to take the 100 footer and measure over to that. I'm 38 and a 32nd, maybe. 38 is what we want. Dude, math is, is math a glorious, glorious thing, though? It's, it's funny, like, when 
when you once you understand it and once you see it and figure it all out, like yeah. it's, it blows your mind actually how I think if you were expecting it, you wouldn't let it happen. Mm, you're a wise man, Greg. They say it comes with age, so I just leveled up my wisdom. Projection. <laughs> We we had we had squared it up and Kobe. Yeah, kind of lucky there. He kind of the wind kind of in there. Greg, is it luck or is it um, careful execution with thoughtful planning? Luck. Okay, so here's what I'll say about standing seam roof in general. You've all heard the saying, "The devil is in the details." Uh, this is a roof system that has a ton of detail. You have to really think about layout. You have to have you know, you kind of have to be one step ahead of yourself to know what you're doing next so that everything goes together because you just, it will not be watertight if you don't. You just have to make sure that certain aspects of the roof are laid out appropriately. And I'm going to try to share with you when I know that those are important um, features, but we're done with the easy stuff. Really, there's not a whole lot of easy um, roofing left. We're going to be dying into the valleys. We've got, that takes a lot of time. Uh, to be good and precise and to make those nice lines up the valley look aesthetically pleasing and there's a lot of waterproofing details that go on there we've got a chimney that we're going to have to flash around that is going to be important and we've got a ridge cap on the porch roof that's going to die into the main roof and have to be watertight detailed as well so hopefully you guys stick through this with me hopefully this is exciting hopefully if this is something you're wanting to do in the future this is educational and helpful and definitely drop questions down below if you have them and i'll do my best to answer them i'm going to get out of here clean up it's been a long day another hot day and i'm ready to go home so we'll catch you guys here tomorrow All right guys, so we're gonna go ahead and start working on this valley pan installation. To make it waterproof, we have to hem it to the bottom of this uh, drip here, this eave flashing, same way we did our metal panels. Now I just wanna apologize, there's a lot of inconsistency in the, in the lighting. So if it goes dark to light, I don't know what to tell you, I'm here by myself today. Greg will be here hopefully in a little while. Okay, now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my first panel the good thing is I snapped a line from this point to the point at the top, so I don't have to have them all installed to line up. I can make sure that I'm running straight based on referencing that snap line. All right, while I'm working out of this lift, I'm gonna take this off. I'm gonna run down past this further than the edge. That way I can hem this back. So I'm just confirming my point on my chalk line. And then I'm gonna scribe my, my roof edge.
So now that I have that angles cut, that's gonna match this eave line here. Now what I can do is take my bending tool here. Oh, hey Greg, what's up dude? Nice of you to join us. Yeah, I just had a little run out of the law. All right, so you can see here now we've got all of our hems bent on the bottom of this panel, which is gonna really nicely lock into our eave. Um, and it's gonna give us a nice watertight connection. I'm still gonna go ahead and run beetle tape up and around this just as a secondary line of defense. Although I feel really good about the way this detail is done right here. Greg, make sure you're in the center up there and then go ahead and we're gonna put a screw to hold this right where we like it. A little bit of action on site today. Plumbers here, the boring guys are, are doing a directional bore to run the electrical underground and they're gonna run water. I think they're gonna eventually run a gas line as well. So uh, if you hear some background noise, that's what we got going on today. I gotta be honest, man, I, I didn't sleep well the last couple nights because I was just excited to get going on this. Not nervous, I'm anxious because we've never done this exact detail as a standing seam fastener free system. A lot of the same methods, look at that, man, that is perfect. Same concept, different way of going about it, yep. Okay, so now that we have, and you can maybe barely see this, but we have a snap line running through this ice and water, and that's what we're making sure this is lined up perfectly with. What we really wanna push for is that the top and bottom are both exact center. Now I'm gonna overlap this about six inches here, and this lap is nice, and I can see up at the very top, my middle is on my snap line exactly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and mark both sides of this hem, and now I'm gonna go ahead and open these up. Just take your snips, throw them in that hem, and kind of, you can just kind of work it up a little bit. Oh, that shade feels nice. So there's our valley pan connection here at a joint. You know, traditional fastener, exposed fastener roof, you're just gonna install your steel. Maybe you're gonna snap a line and you're gonna install your steel to it and then you're gonna screw through the panel and lock it down. Maybe put some of that butyl tape to make it leak proof. However, what we're gonna do is install what's called an offset cleat. It's really just scrap steel and that has a little bit of a bend offset to it. Grego? on in here my dude what we're going to do is we're going to snap a line and this is going to get screwed through um, some butyl tape so that nothing can penetrate but then this is what our panels are actually going to lock onto once again giving nowhere for water to work its way back up in here and giving a nice seamless fastener free look so what we got to do is is make a snap line greg we'll just set this here in the valley where's my pencil right up there right there thank you sir so we're looking for five inches plus the thickness of this trim, which is three. So if we snap the eight inch mark instead of the five inch mark, it's actually gonna help us keep the chalk off of the valley pan. We won't look so trashy. Keep it as li little bit of chalk as possible. Oh, and another thing, don't use a red chalk. Always use, we always use the orange chalk. It seems to come off no problem. All right, we're gonna run this just to the inside so we can see that line. You keep going, I'm gonna walk right up with you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, aren't you always uncomfortable with a stinking lanyard on? Yeah. But Greg, the, I think the point is that you'd rather be uncomfortable than unalive. Yeah. The goal is to hit the middle of your butyl tape. Uh, now let's go ahead and we're gonna get our layout on this valley so that we can start marking up and creating our panels to start working into the valley. This is where the Stabila Tech 700 is super handy for checking your work. You guys remember we made this snap line 
on the roof. This is what we used to lay out our panels going back that way to our gable, making sure that they were square. Everything was precisely where it had to be. We then use this line to confirm and check our valley points up at the top. Everything has been working out great with math. So now that we have this all laid out, based off of those dimensions, we built this building with a 43 and a half degree angle. It's not a 45 degree angle, even though we've got 412, 412. When you lay those roofs down, it turns into a 43 and a half degree angle. I've got the Tech 700 set at 43 and a half degrees. It's actually 43.4, this thing is super sensitive, man, it's awesome. I can now lay this on my snap line and confirm, there's my snap line, there's my 43 and a half degree angle. And the reason that this is so important, you could just eyeball everything, but you're gonna have a challenge the entire process making things look good. Because we spent a lot of time on the layout, we can now assure that when we go and cut and hem all of our panels, if we follow a 43 and a half degree pitch, it's going to not only tuck in perfectly into our cleat trim, but when somebody comes and looks up this valley, it should be perfectly straight and square, which is what you have to have with standing seam. You don't have the ability to move them very much. So everything's gotta be perfect, spend the time. That's all I really wanted to say. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and this first panel comes into our valley. So this is gonna be our first cut. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do this one here, but then we'll actually go down on the uh, ground and prep all these other panels because it's gonna be a lot easier. We've got our angle cut right on our valley pan here. And now what we can do is pull a tape measure from the top to this point, and then we're gonna use math to tell us exactly what this angle should be, what the distance of the rise run to take this triangle into consideration to mark up and prep and put all of these panels in on this valley now. I don't, I do. Well, good news is the angle looks right. You're gonna have to go more extreme than that probably, Greg. What? Uphill? Okay, we're in. All right, so that was a struggle, but we got that first one in. We learned a little bit of lesson. Don't make this, don't make this hem too tight. My arms are heavy, knees weak, palms are sweaty. Back, yeah, but I'm just trying to describe me, Greg. His palms are sweaty, knees weak, arms are heavy, there's vomit on his... All right, so for this guy right here, remember we left the W Valley long here in the middle. All I'm gonna do is draw a line on my eave to where this point comes in. Depending on which way you want your laps to go, most of the time people are gonna be looking at this from over here. So I want this side to lap over. So what I'm gonna do is come in here and I'm gonna cut with my greens. Notice this side is coming up. That is so my other side will bend in first. Take this side first, bend it down. Then I'm gonna take the second side and I'm gonna bend it down. And what this is gonna do really is help keep, maybe keep some of the birds or something from getting up into this little valley, which it'd be a small bird, but they could probably do it. It's all about the aesthetic. All right, so now you guys can see this hemmed panel and it's hemmed and locked right onto this cleat trim. So wind, nothing is gonna take it off the roof because that's nice and screwed down, secured. We're gonna go ahead and start cutting our valley pan pieces or pieces that die into the valley. So I've got my edge dimension here. This we determined up on the roof at 260 and three quarters. And then I just use math, which is 17 and a quarter inch rise every sheet. So I can use 260 and three quarters minus 17 and a quarter to get me my point right over here.
remember, you're gonna push it past. Okay. Okay, go ahead, let's try it. Yep. There we go. Uh-oh. What? I'm out of screws. You got a couple left to borrow? Oh, yeah. Okay. So I think the big thing was um, that we just wanted to, pr you know, prove proof of concept. We wanted to make sure that even though the first one worked, we did two more and it's good. It's been a pretty hot day here. I feel like that's the common theme lately and that's because that has been the common theme. Uh, if the sun pops out, it's miserable, high humidity. Greg and I have not done a lot of visual work today. It seems like we've just been doing a lot of cutting, measuring, checking. Oh, I haven't done much today. Actually, you haven't done anything. Have you done anything today? Bro, I got here late. Yeah, but regardless, we are, uh, we're feeling good at least about these panels that are going into our valley. Um, it's about the end of the day, so we're gonna go ahead and install the ones that we just prepped. We've had a lot going on today. People been here doing whatever, but it is what it is, Greg. What are we gonna do? Excuses, excuses. They are excuses. You know, I like these plastics. They kind of clean your feet off. It was recording. Oh, I see what you just did there. You're such a, such a character, Greg. I got you, brother. Oh, thank you. Hit me. Thank you. Thank you for thinking of me. Respectable, Greg. I'm not saying we can't do better. I'm saying it's respectable. I'm saying it's something that I think any anybody would be proud of, and it'll definitely look extremely amazing from uh, RR headquarters. I can practice self-control like no other. Who? <laughs> I tell you what, guys. I'm ready to get off this roof, even though, of course, as soon as our day's coming to an end. We got this shade coming across this roof, which is right where we're trying to work. I should probably just change our schedule up, come in here and work in the evening because it is gonna only get hotter throughout the week, less of a breeze, and we've got to get this black roof done. So we're just gonna have to bear through it. The good thing is I think we've really figured out our process. So this you know, standing seam roof coming through a valley, there's just a lot of detail work. And I think if you look at it, you will understand why it's taking us some time because we're trying to make it as straight crisp and you know good as possible and those things don't come fast and easy it takes time all good things take time you know so learning the process while we're doing it adds time as well i don't want to mess it up so i don't want to have to buy more so i'm just double checking now though i think i'm feeling really good about the process we have that developed now and we've ran eight panels today consistently and they're running really good. So hopefully tomorrow we get out here and we can really dive into the rest of this valley, this porch and get it all covered up the best we can. And hopefully you guys stick around for that. So I'm gonna get out of here, get home, take a shower and drink probably 10 gallons of water to rejuvenate myself and we'll see you guys back tomorrow. So thanks a lot and we'll catch you later.